call to order the uh, Tuesday, September 1st, 2015 uh, meeting of the Iredell County Board of Commissioners. I want to welcome everyone that's uh, here tonight. Uh, we will start uh, our meeting with a uh, minute of silence. Uh, ask that you reflect on the people's business uh, in a silent prayer or reflection based on your choice. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Smith, are there any adjustments to the agenda? Yes, Mr. Chairman, we've got two adjustments uh, under closed session. I'd like to add economic development, and that's General Statute Reference 143-318-11A4, and personnel 143-318-11A6. Right. Are there any discussion? Uh, is there a motion to approve the uh, agenda as modified? Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Vice Chairman Norman. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, we have no uh, presentations this evening. Uh, appointments before the board. Uh, Mr. Smith. Mr. Chairman, uh, Board of Commissioners, I'd like to introduce Dr. Mitch Renkow. Uh, he is with NC State, and several months ago, uh, Dr. Renkow began a process and a project, a cost of community, community services for Iredell County, uh, and he did this at no cost to us, a uh, very beneficial study as I've read it, and he's going to make a presentation tonight to you. Well, thank you very much. I, I'll, I won't try and keep my remarks brief, I'll allow time for you to have questions if you have any, uh, and we'll go from there. Um, so yes, as, as Ron said, I, I was asked to do this study. I've done a number of these studies in various counties around the state over the last decade and a half or so. Um, and very simply, what I do in these studies is I, I take the most current uh, fisc audited uh, financial report. In this case, for uh, Iredale, it was the 2013-14 uh, certified annual financial report. Looked at the revenues, looked at the uh, expenses, and in collaboration with various department heads and folks in the know in the, go in the local government, I asked them, approximately what fraction was allocated to three different land uses of the services provided. Those, uh, those land uses would be commercial uh, land uses, uh, agricultural land uses, and residential land uses. I also ask uh, largely the folks in the finance and budget departments where the revenue streams are coming and to the extent that we can do that, we parse those out among the various uh, departments that are responsible, okay? And a lot, of those, a lot of those things are sort of general, and I, those I break down on the basis of, of uh, uh, valuation, of property valuations of, of the different land uses, okay? Um, I do this in order to gain a sense of whether or not specific land uses are, in a sense, paying their way from the perspective of just the budget, okay, the county budget. Um, so, you know, three questions that, that can be asked and answered uh, doing this, and this is, a, this is a procedure that's been spearheaded by the American Farmland Trust, and many people have been doing this all over the country. Um, so three questions. One, do property taxes and other revenues generated by residential land uses exceed or not exceed the amount of publicly provided services going to that specific land use residential? Um, a second thing, do farm and forest land 
uh, receive, in some sense, an unfair tax advantage, or are they more or less paying their own way, even in the in the context of present use valuation, which is was sort of a concessionary thing for those agricultural land uses. And a third thing, which is a little bit tangential, but is an easy enough thing to calculate, and people often are interested in, given the the, the nature of how revenue streams are going, what what uh, is being expended on residential land uses, what would be the break-even home price, where if you had an average house. Uh, with an average number of, of users of public services, how much would that house have to be valued at for it to sort of break even and pay for itself? Okay. Now, I've, I've distributed uh, some, a little one-page handout, and that basically summarizes what I found uh, in, in my analyses. And, and, and basically what that is is that the uh, commercial land uses and, ag and agricultural land uses effectively are subsidizing uh, residential land uses. Is, uh, I would point out right immediately, this is a finding that I find in virtually every place that I've done one of these studies. Usually it has to do with the fact that residential land uses consume a heck of a lot of, of uh, social services um, and, 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 and thing, uh, health kinds of expenditures, which are a large footprint in the budget. And that's why they're so sort of skewed, expenses are intend to be skewed towards residential land uses. So, but that all being said, the bottom line is residential land uses do not pay for themselves in the sense that other land uses, commercial and, and uh, agriculture, are, are essentially sort of providing the revenues, the part of the revenue stream that's going to supplement what the, the residential land uses are bringing in. Okay. Um, the, the other thing that I found, and so we, we can talk about that, and so, you know, it, as you can see from the chart, uh, you know, for every dollar that's uh, um, uh, contributed by industrial or commercial land uses, roughly 30 uh, cents is being spent on services provided to those. That's the specific number. In the agriculture case, it's something like 47 uh, cents is being spent on agricultural land uses for every dollar worth of value that they're contributing in the form of taxes and other, other parts of the revenue stream. And conversely, residential land uses cost about $1.35 for every dollar that they're, that they're bringing into the county that they're generating in terms of, of property taxes and other revenue streams. Okay, so that's, that's sort of the big picture finding, which we can discuss. I would make a couple of caveats. One is this is a, by no means an unusual situation. This is pretty much typical, and, and the numbers are relatively in the ballpark of what I've seen in all kinds of counties around the state. Uh, and, and, you know, I've done these studies in Davie and Yadkin, and those numbers look pretty, pretty darn similar to here. Um, a second thing I would, I would note is that these are snapshots. I mean, I'm taking one year of the budget, and it's all based on averages. And there's, you know, obviously some commercial uh, land uses are more heavily using public services and others. Likewise, certain kinds of, of homes, uh, residential properties are generating more, relatively more revenues than, than other ones. So there's, there's a fluidity here. But those are the, the kind of the raw numbers, the averages that, that characterize your county, and that's essentially what I found. The final point I'd make is that we, we did I did calculate this break-even price, which was very high. It was like $369,000 a house if it had the sort of the average number of people using the average number of services, some kids going to school, you know, requiring police and fire protection, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if that house was $369,000 and it was, you know, populated by the average users of public services, it would just break even. And I, I was sort of puzzled. Why is that number so high? It turns out that number is large, largely is so high, I think, because your property tax rate is so darn low here. So it takes a lot more value in, in the house to sort of pay for itself than, than maybe you would find in other places. That sort of summarizes what I found in this study. Uh, you've, you have it in front of you. I, I don't know if you've had time to look at it, but I'm certainly w willing and happy to answer questions if you have any at this time. Okay. Uh, Dr. Renkow, uh, as we look to try to achieve balanced economic growth, because we're experiencing residential growth, uh, particularly in the southern end of the county, uh, whether we like it or don't, um, it's come. Correct. So to be able to uh, balance that with the appropriate percentages, if you were to put percentage on the right mix, would it be 70 percent, 30 percent, 
uh, commercial or you, seventy-five you know, twenty-five? Or right. I, I'm a little uncomfortable answering that question because, in fact, this is sort of the nature of the beast: is that certain land uses are always going to be paying for other land uses, and and like I said, you know, the numbers here are relatively typical. I mean, they're they're not out of line with things that I've seen. Um, there is no magic number out there. I think uh, maybe a, a better way or a different way of interpreting what I've just mentioned, talked about and what's in this report is that it provides you with this sense of, okay, well, if there is going to be a lot of residential development, that is going to come with costs, and we're going to have to make sure through one way or another that the re necessary revenues are going to be generated. Unlike, say, the federal government, you know, you guys aren't in the position of running a deficit here, right? So you got to balance those, those books. One way is raising property tax rates. None of these are very popular things, by the way. Raising property tax rates, you can revalue things. Or you can, you know, you can, you can try and attract sort of non-residential development. So, you know, that would be another approach because we know that commercial establishments tend to more than pay for their own way. So efforts to, to promote more development of those kind of enterprises is probably going to work in your favor. Okay. And, and perhaps even a more politically palatable one. But you know that's your that's for you guys to decide. So any uh, comments or questions to direct to Dr. Just, just an observation that I would like to share Mr. Chairman, you know, we we hear and, and we are to be congratulated on our low tax rate and, and a lot of people are amazed by the, the rate, but we understand that the rate is one part of the equation and the other part is the evaluation. If you will, uh, if you look at counties who are, who are our size, 50, either 15% smaller or 15% larger than us, what you will witnesses the evaluation per capita in Iredale County is substantially higher than it is in other counties our size. So while our rate is substantially lower than a lot of counties, mm -hmm. that doesn't necessarily mean that our property tax bill is a lot lower than other counties. Right. And I think right. you'll find that right. to be the case. Right. In most instances. Fair enough. Yeah. Thank you. Additional comments? Um, Dr. Renko, we really appreciate your uh, time and effort uh, in uh, giving us some uh, numbers to look at. Uh, it just highlights, as uh, has been discussed, you know, we're dealing with a simple algebra equation. Uh, tax base times tax rate is going to produce the dollars needed for services. And if we're going to keep those things in balance without uh, having to look to uh, uh, jiggering with evaluations or uh, increasing taxes, we have to increase the tax base. And that's why our economic development efforts are so critical to achieve that right balance of uh, commercial and industrial uh, development along with the residential development that we're uh, seeing. So um, trying to put an actual figure, and, and, and what he's essentially said is that uh, for a house to break even in terms of uh, the tax revenues generated versus services consumed, you have to be in the neighborhood of $370,000. And uh, most of the houses being built in Iredell County are not $370,000. Even in uh, large subdivisions being built in the southern end, you might be in the 270 to 285, something like that. It still uh, is creating a uh, drain on uh, county finances based on the increase in services. So we have to be very intentional and focused on uh, economic development uh, throughout the entire county so that we can uh, continue to be able to uh, maintain our tax rate, uh, which is uh, still the lowest uh, tax rate of any of our nine contiguous counties. Uh, and we touch more counties than any other uh, County in this state. Right. So, anyway, uh, thank you again. Well, thank you. And, and uh, if, uh, if there is any follow up, you can reach me through Nancy Keith in the Extension Office. So, that, that, that's great. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, we'll now move into uh, public hearings.
We have a uh, public hearing. Uh, first off, uh, this is a, to consider a request from Christ Community Church to release jurisdiction to the town of Mooresville. And uh, Mr. Todd, if you could give us a rundown. Good evening to the board. Good evening. Uh, the first request we have before us tonight is the uh, ETJ release of a 14.3 acres off uh, Shinville Road. You can see the property outlined in blue. The hatched area is already city limits for Mooresville. And again, the um, owners, or the future owners, have petitioned Mooresville for voluntary annexation in June of 2016. They're coming before the county for the release of jurisdiction so they can go ahead and get the ball rolling on development of this property as opposed to wait until June of 2016 when they would be annexed by the city. Uh, this is a map of the land use plan showing medium density residential for the area. Uh, the property is currently zoned RA under the county's jurisdiction and a church would be allowed by right to be built in the RA district. Uh, here's an aerial image of the property. Again, the parcel's in yellow. I also point out that this uh, front parcel up on Shinville that's already in the city limits is part of the uh, total acreage. And I'd be happy to answer any questions from the board at this time. Did you receive any negative comment about the proceeding forward with the release of ETJ? Uh, we have not received any calls. Any further questions for Mr. Todd? Okay. At this time, I'll call the uh, public hearing uh, into session. Uh, I would note that there are a number of folks that have signed up uh, uh, as present, uh, potentially to be heard. Uh, if I could read everyone's names, if I miss uh, for the record, uh, David Teague at uh, 107 uh, Lacone Trace, Scott and uh, Brenna Johnson at 115 Hollyoak Way, Lynn Stanley, 119 <coughs> Hollyoak Way, Philip Keller at 449 Shinville Road, uh, Jason Hawk at 144 uh, Chollywood Drive, uh, Tammy Camparella, or is it Campanella, 148 Charliewood Drive. Uh, Jim uh, Dandarand, or am I close? Okay, at 140 Charliewood Drive. Jeff Kale at 262 Forest Walkway, and Renee Lewis and Mark Lewis at 114 Spring Lake Drive. Uh, I am going to make a, uh, take a leap of faith and, and assume that most everyone who is signed here is in support of the release of uh, ETJ to the town of Morrisville. If that's the case, uh, could you all raise your hands if I called your names? Okay. Is there anyone that I called who is in opposition to the release of ETJ? Okay, got two. Let's have questions. Okay. All right. Well, I just wanted to see if there wasn't any kind of issue, then we probably didn't need to go through uh, a lot of formal uh, hearing, but uh, understanding that there are some questions. Um, and uh, why don't we just start off with those who have some questions, and then we can uh, finish up. So, sir, if you could come up, uh, and if you'll state your name for the record and your address. Yes, please. And speak into the microphone so everybody can hear you. Uh, Lynn Stanley is my name. Okay. And what we were questioning about, um, can you go back to the slide before where you've got the, the different view with the yellow highlight, if you don't mind? Right there. There you go. The property up front, as you see, there's an easement for a road right away to come through. And as you go back towards the very first corner, this is my lot on the corner at the top of the cul de sac. So my question is, as we discussed previously with some other people, how close is the road going to come to my property line? Because now we're going to lose all our privacy. We're going to end up with a road on my backyard. We're going to have a parking lot there. So everything that we bought into when we purchased into this land is now going away. 
So what we were asking before, is there going to be buffers there? Is there going to be site buffers there? Noise buffer there? Because there's going to be a road that's going to have to be paved, water runoff. I mean, there's just quite a few questions involved with this as to what's coming down, oops, sorry, uh, as to what's coming down the road. I mean, I understand you guys are just releasing it to Mooresville at this point, but that's the questions that we were concerned about. Okay. Uh, Mr. Todd, do you want to address the uh, nature of uh, more, the town of Mooresville's involvement in uh, all of those issues and uh, what this process is about? Uh, sure. You know, I, I cannot speak to Mooresville specific guidelines. All I could state is that the county on, on driveway setbacks for, for church use, actually we would have no setbacks. You could have the driveway right up to the property line. Um, and uh, as far as buffers and screening, again, at the county level for a church because it's allowed in a residential district, um, the only screening we would be looking at would be some parking lot screening, uh, nothing for the driveway or the use. So Mooresville specific requirements, that would come through their office, and uh, I do not have those. Is, is there anyone who is uh, representing the uh, church who could address those questions about screening? Yes, sir. <coughs> Thank you so much, Commissioners. My name is uh, Pastor David Teague uh, from Christ Community, and uh, we're a church that's been around for nine years in the Mooresville community. And one of our highlights is that we want to be good neighbors, obviously. Uh, our goal is to reach out to people and show people the love of Jesus, and so we don't want to do that by being bad neighbors right off the start. And, um, and so uh, we are in the initial phases of purchasing. This is actually wrapping up our due diligence. Uh, we're purchasing the property from River Life Fellowship Church. And so uh, they had potential plans to build on that property, and they've laid those aside. Uh, and so now we're in the process in a contractual agreement with them to purchase the property. And so uh, for, for us, as far as for our concern, our, any potential building that we've submitted thus far to the town has been on that back 14 acres. Anything towards the road front, it should be something more like a, a park-like setting or playground that would be open to all community, uh, not just for Pecan Hills development, but for all the community at large. And so it would be in our best interest to make sure we also had buffers as well. I know these, these homeowners, they bought these lots and it looked over this beautiful forest when they purchased these lots from Lenar Homes. And so uh, our intention is not to go in and just strip level everything down so that they can stare at a building. Uh, part of our process of what we would love to see as well, uh, we, we haven't gotten architectural development plans yet, and that won't be possible until we find out if it can be annexed into the city. But once those plans are approved, uh, part of what we would like to see happen is to have some walkways through natural areas of forest around the perimeter of that 14 acres. And so that would be a goal for us. Uh, so yes, as far as barriers or any sort of right of way, uh, we would do our best to be very good neighbors and go above and beyond anything that would uh, be any concerns from the community. And we would welcome any kind of questions, advisements as we're preparing to plan and do architectural drawings, anything like that. We would welcome any input from this community uh, that's located right, right in front of us because we really want to be good neighbors and reach out to them. So any way we can serve them, we'd love to do that. Thank you, uh, Pastor T. Um, does that address some of your issues? It's not in specifics, but in terms. Well, exactly. It does, and I take it going forward then, if the town of Mooresville gets this, there will be another hearing involved in this going forward as far as right-of-ways, runoffs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, at that time, correct? That's correct. <laughs> Okay, so once it's released from this jurisdiction, then we'll go through another set the same way. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, at that point, this does at that. And, and the town of Mooresville tends to have a, a little bit of a higher standard of protection mm -hmm. than, than, than the development codes as it's zoned today. Right. Okay. Okay. So going forward, there will be another, at least another set to talk about it as far as what we've discussed as far as privacy, et cetera. That's correct. Cool deal. That's just a question then. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, there was, uh, was it Mr. Danaran? Somebody had a. Uh, yeah, I'm good. Okay, good. Okay. Would anyone else 
like to be heard on the uh, request for release to e of ETJ. Okay. Very hearing none. Any, I will close the uh, in hearing. Any uh, comments for, uh, from any of the commissioners? Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to say that uh, although I don't know a whole lot of folks with uh, Christ Community Church, I, like others in Mooresville, have watched them from afar and have been very impressed with how they work with the community and um, started out in a school, moved into a temporary church, and now they're moving to set their campus. And I think their footprint and their, their influence in that community will be a good one. I'm confident that... Uh, they will be a good neighbor to these folks behind them. Great. Uh, is there a motion? No. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve the release of zoning and subdivision jurisdiction to the town of Mooresville by Christ Community Church on behalf of River Life Fellowship, Inc. of North Carolina. Okay. Motion uh, made by Commissioner Robertson. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. I want to thank everyone uh, from uh, Christ Community Church for attending and the neighbors, and I'm sure that you'll work things out. Yes, uh, uh, Thank you so much, uh, commissioners. And I, and I would just say anybody here that's a neighbor, I, I, I'm going to be out in, in the back. I'd be glad to give you my cell phone number. Uh, if you have any questions at all, please let us know how we can work together okay. to be good neighbors with that. Okay. Thank you all very much. Mr. Todd, once again, uh, move on to another matter of uh, ETJ release. Uh, this next request we have before us is on Promenade Drive off Brawley School Road. You can see it outlined in blue. And again, you've, uh, you've got existing Morrisville's jurisdiction and county has the property zone community business. Uh, earlier this year, this back piece was released with a wet detention pond on it. And now the uh, owner is requesting that the front portion be released. And it is my understanding that they're looking at doing an, a multi-tenant office business type use on the property. Uh, the county's land use plan calls for this area to be corridor commercial. And uh, there's a aerial image of the property in question. And I'd be happy to answer any additional questions on this one. Any uh, questions or comments? I'll call uh, into order the public hearing on the uh, request by Southern Properties LLC to release zoning and subdivision jurisdiction to the town of Mooresville. Uh, there is uh, one individual that has uh, signed up, uh, Mr. Pete uh, Grex Grexis. Uh, sir, would you like to have anything to say? No, just, just here to. Okay, good. Is there anyone else in attendance that uh, would like to be heard on this matter? Well, hearing none, this declare this public uh, hearing be closed. <coughs> uh, is there any further discussion? Uh, is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, I'd offer a motion to approve the release of zoning and jurisdiction, subdivision jurisdiction to the town of Mooresville by Southern Properties, LLC. Motion by Commissioner Johnson. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. Mr. Todd. Okay, uh, next before us is an actual rezoning. Uh, it's off Fanjoy Road. That's outlined in blue. Uh, you can see there's a, surrounded by RA, there is a five acres that existing M1 CD. It's a, a trust manufacturing facility. And they're looking at adding an additional 1.578 acres to this rezoning. Um, staff supports this request because it's a minimal expansion of an existing business. It's conditional zoning and limited uses will be allowed. Potential traffic impacts should not exceed the road capacity. Uh, because it's a conditional rezoning, there was a uh, public input meeting held on site. 
uh, by the applicant. And then uh, at planning board, it was a 6-0 recommendation and approval for the request. Uh, the county's land use plan does classify this area of medium density residential. Uh, there's a aerial of the property. And a few pictures of the subject property. Uh, that's from the driveway looking across Fanjoy Road at some of the residences. Uh, a few pictures on the interior of the property. <coughs> and another picture, aerial picture of the property. Uh, there's the conditional site plan for the property showing the existing buildings. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions uh, from the board for <clears throat> Mr. Todd? But basically, they're just not in compliance now. We're bringing them into compliance. Uh, right. Yeah, there were some building additions that done to cross the property line, and this brings <clears throat> them into compliance. When were those buildings built? Do you know? uh, the property owner is here, but in the last few years, I don't know the exact dates on those. It just seems kind of a, it was a weird shaped, you know, parcels. Right, and the, the property owner, of course, owns the the acreage that's surrounding it. Um, it's a personal farm, so. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any additional questions or comments? Okay. I'll declare the uh, public hearing. Uh, to consider a request from Sammy Deal to amend a five-acre conditional zoning district and rezone an additional 1.578 acres at 453 Fanjoy Road in Statesville from residential agricultural to light manufacturing conditional zoning district M-1CD. Okay. Uh, I don't uh, have anyone signed up to be heard, uh, but is there anyone in the audience uh, that would like to be heard? Hearing none, declare the public hearing uh, closed. Uh, is there any further uh, comment or discussion from the board? None. Is there a motion? Mr. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Mr. Chairman, I would move that we uh, recommend in favor of this zoning map amendment and to make the findings that uh, though the request is inconsistent with the adoption of the 2030 plan, that it is reasonable and it's in the public's best interest because it is a minimal expansion of an existing business and it's consistent with the past rezoning cases in the area and the conditional request of the site plan is site plan specific. Motion by Commissioner Bowles. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Todd. <coughs> this time uh, we're moving uh, on uh, the health department. Uh, Ms. Jane Murray has a request for approval of a budget member, a uh, budget amendment for CP Center of Public Health Quality Funds. Thank you. The first budget amendment is for $2,700 from the Center for Public Health Quality. We have a six-member team that are learning about quality improvement methods and tools with the goal to increase patient retention of critical health information in the family planning clinic. And there's over $17,000 of in-kind funds and training that they're providing with us, and the team's working very hard. So we ask for approval of, of those dollars. Are there any questions of uh, Ms. Murray? Hearing none, is there a motion? A motion to approve it, Chair. A motion by Vice Chairman Norman. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. The next budget amendment is for $16,610 from the Division of Public Health Epidemiology Preparedness Section 
for Ebola virus disease preparedness. As you know, last fall we worked extremely hard to develop plans and work with community organizations and finally some money's coming back to help in that endeavor. And the biggest expenditure will be to purchase what's called a port account machine to help in our respiratory preparedness program that we're required to do by the Department of Labor and OSHA to do fit testing for our N95 respirators. Um, diseases that are aerosolized, we have to offer that service, tuberculosis, SARS, and Ebola. And we have a current program, but we use saccharin or Bitrix to do that, and there are some individuals that are allergic to that or it doesn't work. So this machine allows us to offer a more thorough fit testing to make sure we're protecting staff. Uh, any questions for uh, Ms. Murray? Hearing none, is there a motion uh, to approve the budget amendment number seven for Ebola preparedness and response funds? I offer that motion, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Johnson. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. The next budget amendment is for $21,450 from the Women and Children's um, Nutrition Branch from the Division of Public Health. And that money is earmarked specifically for breastfeeding support. And we would like to hire two contract individuals, one to work in Mooresville, one to work in Statesville, to work with those young ladies that have decided to breastfeed. Our goal is to continue that at least through six months. Our percentages wane considerably after six weeks. So that's what we would like to do with those funds. Uh, any questions for Ms. Murray? Is, uh any further discussion? Is there a motion to approve budget amendment number eight for additional WIC funds? Motion to approve. Motion by Vice Chairman Norman. Any further discussion? And then all in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. And the final budget amendment is for $3,500, again, from the Division of Public Health, Epidemiology, Preparedness and Response Section through the city's readiness initiative and that is through the centers for disease control dollars that are passed through the state and we are one of 36 metropolitan statistical areas identified by the cdc in the country because we're connected to mecklenburg county several counties surrounding mecklenburg and what we would like to do um, with those dollars is to purchase supplies we have exercises we have to be prepared in the event of a large-scale biological attack to be able to distribute antibiotics and such like anthrax to make sure we can get 168,000 people doxycycline if we have that event. So these dollars will be used to, to purchase signs and printing for our site, for our exercises in the event we, we have to protect the community in that manner. Any questions for Ms. Murray? Okay, is there a motion to approve budget amendment? Budget amendment number nine for city's readiness initiative requirements. <clears throat> Motion approved, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Robertson. Any discussion? All in favor, please say. I was going to say, I'm just, you know, a lot of folks don't realize that, that, that the big metropolitan areas like Charlotte, they are dependent, if, you know, if they are a target, whether it's for mm -hmm. a 9 11 type attack or right. some other sort of terrorist attack that, that could be bad. I mean, part of, part of the way from a federal level that they plan to deal with that is that the surrounding communities are going to be the ones who end up having to kind of pick up the pieces and, and put it all together. So um, because, you know, if you're, if you're on ground zero, your, your first responders and your health department, you're, mm -hmm. you know, fill in the blank, um, they're going to they're gonna be disabled or their effectiveness reduced. So, um, so really, if there's a if there's an emergency in in the Charlotte region, uh, they're going to be expecting our our firefighters, our rescue personnel, our law enforcement to pitch in, and this is just kind of part of that. So, whenever people say, you know, why in the world are we doing this? I mean, that's part of the overall plan. So, Mr. Chairman, I make the motion to approve. Okay. Motion by Commissioner Robertson. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say that. Say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. You hit a grand slam you. tonight. Thank you. Four out of four. All right. 
Okay, moving on, uh, the next item is a request to approve the use of the design build delivery method for our proposed public safety complex project. And Mr. Montgomery? Uh, Mr. Montgomery is actually out on medical leave. Okay. So I'm Robert Woody, I'm going to stand in for him tonight. Yeah. Um, this is a request uh, for the board's approval to use design build delivery method for the proposed public safety complex. Um, on June 2nd, the board approved the resolution establishing the criteria for that design and in your memo, we have answered the questions of those criteria and I'll be glad to answer any questions you may have. Okay, are there any uh, questions from the board for Mr. Woody? I want to make sure I understand the process. This is, is this the criteria that we're going to establish to decide that a design build method of construction would be the best way to go? Is this what that decision is going to be based on? Yes, sir. Okay. You, you will have another opportunity once we're into that process, but this is this allows us to to move forward with uh, with our next steps for design build instead of bid build. So this establishes the basis for your recommendation when you come back that recommendation will have a just justification associated with it based on these criteria is that is, is that the way yes we when we come back we will and and mr woody you step in if i speak incorrectly here but uh when we come back we will actually have a project um for you to be considering okay okay But tonight, we're, we're adopting the roadmap to be able to allow you to do <coughs> Yes, sir. And so, okay. Correct. Is there any uh, further uh, discussion or questions? Mr. Woody? Okay. Uh, is there a motion to approve the use of the design build delivery method for the proposed public safety complex project? I would offer that motion, Mr. Chairman. Motion. Motion uh, by Commissioner Johnson. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Woody. Thank you. Next item uh, relates to the renewal of the fairgrounds lease. And uh, Beth Jones, our Deputy County Manager, share that. We discussed this at length at our pre-agenda meeting with uh, both members of uh, Kiwani Club as well as uh, uh, Mayor Richardson and uh, the town manager of uh, Trout. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, before you for your consideration is the um, lease with the Kiwanis Club to manage the fairgrounds property. We currently have a five-year lease that is expiring the end of this month. And we are recommending approval of or renewal of that lease with three changes. The um, three changes are stipulated at the bottom of memo number 10. The one is the size of the beer garden. The other is um, the matching funds from the county and Kiwanis that go into a matching fund that capital items are purchased for the fairgrounds property. And the third is the money that the county will reimburse back for um, county-related agriculture activities because we've added some to the fairgrounds property to pay for utilities, water, things of that nature. Those are the three additions. I will say that the Kiwanis Club has managed the fairgrounds for 22 years. The fair that we have in Iredale County is actually sponsored by the Kiwanis Club, so it is a good partnership with Kiwanis managing those fairgrounds. Um, there, were, there was some interest uh, several months ago from possibly the town of Troutman to look at um, putting in or uh, throwing their hat in the ring to manage the fairgrounds and they chose not to at this point. But they did submit a letter asking for um, some consideration of various items. I think there were four different items and that letter is attached to the back of memo number 10. Be happy to answer any questions you may have. Are there any uh, comments or questions for <coughs> Ms. Jones? Any uh, comments in general? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a few comments. Um, even though this particular lease that is up for our consideration this evening is an increase from 6,000 to 8,000 square feet, 
I believe there are more control measures put in place on this 8,000 foot uh, proposal to control mm -hmm. the consumption of alcohol. And that's the reason I'm in favor of this this evening. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I intend to support this recommendation. I just want to make sure we understand a few points that there was a lengthy and, and Mr. Jim Head was on on this committee that was appointed several years ago. There was a lengthy discussion and at some time I would say spirited discussion about whether we should allow the sale of alcohol on the fairground. The original recommendation of 6,000 square feet was a compromise. So now we're going to 8,000 square feet. So now the point of reference in discussion is 6,000 square feet. Previously at the initial discussion, it was zero. So it's now 6,000. So now we're going to go to 8,000. The next group of people who sit here and discuss this, the point of reference will then be 8,000 square feet. And indeed, we all witnessed during the agenda briefing that we even migrated further afield from the original discussion and that we were going to allow people to drink wine in tents in front of the fairground. This is the way these things tend to go. So I'm going to support the thing, but if it, don't be offended. I don't want to hear any more about a beer garden till the end of this thing. <laughs> because these folks agreed to 8,000. By golly, it's 8,000. In the interim, we heard a lot of complaining, well, this is unworkable. Well, if we got an agreement, let's all live by it, and we'll let somebody down the road worry about 8,000 square foot. And, you know, whether they're sitting in a tent riding bicycles, riding horses, drinking wine, or i.e. sophisticated drunks, or whether you got motorcycle riders over here, which are less sophisticated drunks, that makes no difference. Alcohol is alcohol, and you got to be careful because, you know, Norman Rockwell painted a lot of pictures of affairs in years gone by, and it's always depicted as a wholesome, family-oriented community gathering, and, and Iredale County, I think, stands out because it's been that way. And I don't want to see us migrate too much from that, and if, that's, if that offends a bunch of guys on bicycles with britches too tight, then they take it somewhere else. We are what we are. So, Mr. Chairman, that we, Mr. Johnson, we did not agree on any beer in the tents, right? <clears throat> Do what? We did not agree on any kind of beer or wine in the tents. Well, they're going to crawl up in that tent, and they're going to do what they're going to do. Yeah. They're just not going to do it in front of everybody. Thank you. And there, and there will be no alcohol at the fair. I, yeah, the fair is not an event. There, that there, alcohol is. <laughs> there is no alcohol at the fair at all. Right. Uh, okay. And... It's my understanding, Mr. Jones, that the 6,000 square foot limitation, there was a process by which you could negotiate a larger amount, and that, that 8,000 square foot was negotiated recently and was appropriately implemented. Is that correct? Correct. There was actually a trade-off. There was 6,000 in the initial lease with an appeal that can be made to the Fairgrounds Inspection Committee. And there was a compromise and an agreement that was worked out between the two parties, the party that wanted to lease the fairgrounds for their event and the fairgrounds inspection committee to compromise with that 8,000 square feet. And because that was successful and the event was held successfully without, without any incidents, then the, to take the fairgrounds inspection committee kind of off the hook of trying to amend that and change that, the agreement was to go ahead and put it at 8,000 with no exception, no exclusion. It could be smaller. It could be anywhere from zero to 8,000. That 8,000 is the maximum, and there are built-in crowd control measures as well as far as security officers and crowd control officers. Thank you for that Absolutely. clarification. Nope. One more clarification. I appreciate everything she said is right. I support this thing. The reason we're at 8,000 folks and not 6,000, they didn't live up to the agreement. They, they were breaking the rules. Let's be sure. This is not trying to be difficult, but we went from six to eight thousand because the people who agreed to six thousand weren't abiding by the rules. And now we're at eight thousand. They say, 
they say they can manage it, let's make, let's hold them to the word. Thank you. I appreciate your work. I'm not being difficult. Just make sure everybody understands. My understanding is that they negotiated the 8,000 square feet. They didn't, that they availed themselves of the rules to appeal to the, the committee to expand to the 8,000. Is that right? Or did they have an earlier iteration where they were in excess of the 6,000? Their, their initial re request was to allow alcohol throughout the fairgrounds property and not limit it at all. And that was not approved. Yeah. The, um, the previous contracts with this entity was to have a 6,000 square foot beer garden and have it roped off. My understanding was it was it was not being roped off and it was kind of difficult to man and, and control. So the committee met with mm -hmm. members of that and came up with a compromise of the 8,000 to have it sectioned off and have it <coughs> set aside in a separate area, roped off, and that was successful. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Any further questions, comments? Is there a motion to approve the renewal of the fairgrounds lease uh, with the Kiwanee Club? Of I State would offer that motion, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Johnson. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those aye. opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. I want to thank the uh, members of the Kiwanee uh, Club of Statesville for their 22 years of uh, uh, faithful and uh, very uh, devoted service uh, to the county and uh, to the nonprofit organizations that benefit from the profits from the uh, fair and all the other activities that you oversee. And uh, we look forward to uh, your completing dutifully 27 years. So thank you, Mr. Much. Chairman. If I could make one more comment, and I was on the fairgrounds committee for a long time, and. Uh, when folks begin to talk about taking over the fairground, regardless of that's some other civic group or whether it's town Troutman, I don't think they have any idea what they're asking for. Uh, Jim's like, Jim Head's like myself, he's getting a little older and a whole lot more crotchety. So you tend not to put up with things like you used to, but in the time that I was on that board, it was always a pleasure to deal with Jim Head because he was a man of his word. He did what he said he was going to do, and he fulfilled any commitment he had. And I also, the other thing, is I don't think people understand if they're going to talk about running that fairground. If they're going to hire somebody to do everything that's done down there, they're going to have a big budget. I wouldn't put a number on it, but I doubt $200,000 a year to cover it. It's, it's going to be a pretty sizable undertaking for anybody to do. So this group of people has saved the county a lot of money. I'll say one more thing about it. I want to congratulate Mr. Bolt because now that you're on the fairground committee and you go to the fair and you will walk into the front gate, you will not enjoy all the children riding the rides. You will not enjoy all the festivities. Nancy Keith and Jim Head will meet you at the front date, gate and they'll say, Steve, come over here in the barn. We've got to do something with all this cow manure. <laughs> so that will become your duty, Mr. Bowles, and I'm sure you'll do a good job. <laughs> thank, thank you, Mr. Johnson, uh, for that rave review. And uh, I would say that I am not new to the manure industry. But the fact of the matter is, if it was easy, they'd have cheerleaders doing that job. So, but thank you. Yep. Well, we'll supply you with some hip leaders. <laughs> thank you all again. Appreciate uh, everything you do. You. Moving on to um, item G on our agenda, uh, approval of the Sertoma Park property donation proposal. Uh, Ms. Michelle Hepperler. Hearing for Parks and Rec. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. How are you doing? On behalf of the Idle County Parks and Recreation Department, as well as the Idle County Recreation Advisory Committee, we request the approval to accept the Sertoma Park property 
located at 141 Dietz Road on or following November 5th of 2015. I know we've talked about this before, but if you guys have any additional questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Um, Mr. Smith, is there anything you'd like to add? Uh -huh. perspective? Um, I, I don't think so. We, we've talked a good bit about this. I will say that this, as well as the next three items, are all related and, mm -hmm. and will kind of be pieces of a puzzle that will bring this all together. But for this one, we're just to vote to agree in concept? I, I would say you, to be. you would go ahead and agree to their proposal effective November 4th. November 4th. Okay. Is there, are there any questions, further questions or comments? Motion to approve. Okay. Uh, motion by Vice Chairman Norman to approve uh, the Sotoma Park property donation proposal as submitted. Any further discussion? Effective November 4th. Effective November 4th. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. Michelle, excuse me, just a minute. Commissioner Robertson, since you brought it up, I'll point out that the next two are going to be resolutions. So the resolutions would have to be adopted on the next two. And then the final is the adoption of a project ordinance. So that would actually allocate money to make various improvements and purchases and such. Correct. Any questions on the property donation? Okay. okay. On behalf of Ardle County Parks and Recreation Department and the Ardle County Recreation Advisory Committee, we request a motion to adopt a resolution authorizing the advertisement and sale of the property originally designated for North Ardle Park located at 583 Bustle Road. Any questions or discussion? Mr. Chairman, one, for the sake of some of the folks who have posed questions to me, that I don't feel that I'm qualified to answer. I would like for our county attorney, attorney uh, to uh, explain the legal process here as far as the disposition of this property. I could call him, we could call on him to explain the procedure that'll be involved in this. Mr. Pope? Sure. Uh, to understand, I think it's, important to recognize there are certain um, underpinnings that you have to recognize. Uh, one is the uh, fact that the legislature doesn't trust you to sell land. Uh, not only do they not trust you, they don't trust any governmental agency in North Carolina to sell land. They, they, they don't trust you to sell it in private sale, that is. They require you to sell it in certain ways. You can't just negotiate with your friends to, to uh, sell to them land that's owned by the public. Uh, you, you have to sell it in certain transparent ways. And the uh, statute uh, allows you two or three options of how to get rid of public property, but just uh, selling it by private treaty uh, to your friends, even though they may pay the highest price of anybody, is not an option. Uh, I'll come back to that in just a minute and tell you what the what allowable ways are. Uh, but before I do, I want to point out the, another underpinning here that I think is compounds this situation a little bit, and that is that the deed to the property that we're proposing to sell contains uh, a restrictive covenant. And that restriction uh, gives the people that sold that property to the county uh, originally a first refusal right. Not only do they have that right among themselves, but their children have that right. So that right's going to be in place for a long time. That complicates uh, the sale process and as a fact we have to deal with in trying to decide what is the best way to sell this property to get the most money for it for the taxpayers 
And the, stat the statute says uh, that, that governs the disposition of public property, uh, specifically says that uh, real property uh, can't be sold by private negotiation. It says that if you want to sell it, you, you can do it in one of three ways. One way is what's called public auction. Second way is what's called a negotiated offer, advertising that offer, and then let it stand open for an upset bid process. And the third way is an advertisement for sale bids. Now, uh, the staff here uh, considered those three options of how to get rid of this property in a way that would bring the most money for the taxpayers and felt that because of the encumbrance on the title, the, restrict, the uh, restrictive covenant that creates the uh, first refusal right, that the best way to do this would be to do it, would be to advertise for sealed bids. Apparently the thinking was that it would cause uh, people who were interested in buying the property to um, make their best offer. And knowing that uh, that offer could be upset by or uh, matched, that is, by the people who held that uh, first refusal right. So uh, I, don't, I don't think there's any way of knowing for sure which way would likely yield the most money for the county, but uh, a public auction doesn't work very well with that, uh, res that restriction there. Just hard to make it work. The uh, negotiated offer with the advertisement and upset bid uh, could work, but it would be protracted. It could be somewhat protracted. And the feeling was that under the circumstances with this restriction, that the advertisement for sale bids was the uh, method most likely to yield the most money for the county. Did that answer the question? Yes, sir. Thank you. Are there any other questions or further discussion? Is there a motion to adopt a resolution, which, by the way, is uh, contained on the back of uh, memo number 12, uh, which references to the sealed bid sale process? Is there a motion to adopt a resolution authorizing the advertisement and sale of the property originally designated for North Idle Park and located at 583 Russell Road? Russell Road. Sorry. Mr. Chairman, motion to authorize the resolution. Motion by Commissioner Robertson. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Um, your next memo, number 13, references another um, adoption of resolution. So on behalf of Idle County Parks and Recreation Department, the Idle County Recreation Advisory Committee, we request a motion to adopt a resolution to sell the Idle County-owned 0.82-acre tract of land with a 1,600, 16, 1,690 square foot home located at 1370 Scotts Creek Road. Any questions uh, for Ms. Hepler? Uh, could you explain uh, this house? Sure. Its relationships to the uh, Scotts Creek Road property and why it was purchased in the first place? Yeah, I'll be yeah. glad to. Um, so um, in 2009, the Scotts Rosenwald community donated um, a piece of property to our department. Um, we accepted that property and um, applied for a grant, made improvements in the amount of over $190,000 um, to improve that into a community park. Um, the purchase of this property was made um, in order to straighten our property lines and um, give us just a, a little bit more parking. Um, and then we pulled or had surveyed, had the land surveyed, pulled the house um, and its immediate vicinity acreage off of that. And so we're selling that separately. It was a, it was a, a deep lot 
correct. And we just lopped off the back part and are selling the uh, house with sufficient acreage to. Yes. And there is a, uh, this is another sealed bid. It is. Proposal, uh, minimum acceptable bid, 129000 Is that correct? Correct. Okay. okay. Any further questions, discussion? Uh, is there a motion to adopt a resolution to sell the Iredell County owned 0.828 acre tract of land with 1,690 square foot house located at 1370 Scotts Creek Road, Statesville, 28625. Mr. Chairman, I would offer that motion, uh, that motion to support the resolution to sell the Scotts Creek Road property. Motion made by Commissioner Bowles. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. <coughs> The last request, memo number 14, um, is a request on behalf of the Parks and Recreation Department, the Recreation Advisory Committee, to um, approve or adopt the Sertoma Park Project Ordinance, which is also attached. Um, this breaks down um, the funding sources and the funding uses for us to um, begin the development of what would be in a new North Iredell Park. So the purpose of this is to put legs on actually creating a North Iredell Park. Yes, it is. All right. uh, any further comments, questions, uh, Ms. Hepler? None. Is there a motion uh, to approve the Sertoma Park Project Ordinance? Motion to approve, sir. Motion by Vice Chairman Norman. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Ms. Hepler. Thank you guys very much. And thank, thank the staff, uh, yourself, for the great work you've done about putting this, all the moving pieces in this uh, together and uh, uh, creating a, a viable funding stream for accomplishing our goals. It's definitely a complex project, um, but we're really excited about being able to provide play opportunity and recreation and leisure opportunity for the folks in the northern part of the county. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, Mr. Lale is up. There's a request for approval and signature on a 24-month auto-renewing agreement with AT&T to upgrade internet connectivity at EMS bases at Troutman, Trinity, and Perth Church Road. Yes, good evening. Uh, this particular request is to upgrade the uh, uh, internet service that goes into the different uh, EMS facilities. The current net VPN is going to be going away within the next 24-month period, and we need to get this project moving as soon as possible so that we don't leave those bases without internet connection. They are intending to move some more uh, different types of programs into those bases to, to, to upgrade their ability to be able to use the, the, the internet connection uh, to be able to, to enhance that. This particular agreement, as Chairman said, is a two-year agreement. It does automatically extend with AT&T. AT&T has the current service for that. This DSL will actually save the county about $120 per month, bringing the cost per month per site from $180 down to $60 per month. This is just the start of the process. Um, <clears throat> the first of three, the total number is going to be around 10 sites over a period of time for this uh, change. If you have any other questions, I'd be glad to try to answer those. Any questions for Mr. Lale? Mr. Lale, is this what they is this what AT and T calls UVerse, or is this business DSL a different animal? This is business DSL. It is different. Right. Yes. Sir. Any additional questions or comments? Is there a motion to approve and execute a 24-month auto renewing agreement with AT and T to upgrade internet connectivity to DSL? at EMS bases in Troutman, Trinity, and Perth Church Road. Mr. Chairman, I would offer that motion that we would uh, approve this request of and signature for 24 months on a renewing on the AT&T upgrade. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Motion by Commissioner Bowles to approve. All in favor, please say aye. 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 
Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Leo. Uh, Mr. Smith, we just have an announcement of a vacancy. I've got to get the minutes. August 18th, 2015 minutes. Oh, all right. All right. Is there a motion to approve the minutes from August 18th? Motion by Vice Chairman Norman. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those aye. opposed, like sign. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I do. There is one announcement: uh, the Recreation Advisory Committee. All right. All right. No further action needed on that matter. Appointments to boards and commissions. We have one appointment for the Animal Grievance Committee, and Sandra Gregory has volunteered. Okay. Is there a motion? Move, Mr. Uh, motion to appoint Sandra Gregory to the Animal Grievance Committee. All in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. The second appointment is for the Central Line of Workforce Development Board. That's one appointment. And Deborah Brower has volunteered. And she does meet the requirements for that board being from the southern end and in the private sector. Is there a motion to uh, approve Deborah uh, Brower's appointment to the Central Line of Workforce Development Board? Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Robertson. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. Is there any unfinished business to come before the board? Mr. Chairman, I believe this would fit under the headline of uh, unfinished business. I asked uh, Captain Connolly for some more recent information. Uh, actually, I ran into him, and he told me he had 340 shut-ins over there off the Water Street. So I asked him, did he have any idea how that was going to impact his budget? I believe there's $790,000 approved for off-site housing. That includes... Uh, outside of the county at the annex on 21 and pump and hall and he's of the opinion now when i ask him pointedly that he may be over budget on that number if it continues to rise so i'm going to ask at this point that the county manager and his staff come back to us at the next county commissioners meeting and uh, give us an estimate of where they think we could be by the end of our budget year I think that would uh, G Hall with the uh, normal uh, report on the uh, jail uh, size of uh, inmates uh, at that point in time. So, yeah. Mr. Smith, if you could work that. He's, Captain Connolly said he had already a lot. I think he said Ms. Robertson had, had created the spreadsheet. He could plug the latest numbers in pretty quick for us. Okay, that's all I have, sir. Thank you. Is there any new business to come before the uh, board? Seeing none, Mr. Smith, have the manager's report. Thank you. Very quickly, uh, you were given a copy. I hope you were able to take a look at it. Um, a copy of a book of maps and information from NCACC. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I think it's the first time they've actually compiled all that information. And uh, a lot of it I've never seen before and very good information in there. I'd, I'd point you to the school funding piece uh, and how we stand within the state from, from a county perspective only, which was very interesting to me. Uh, so if you have, t have a chance, take a look at that. Uh, again, I think it's uh, a good document, and it shows how healthy this county really is in comparison to some of our neighbors. And uh, for the benefit of the public, um, we did talk in uh, – pre-agenda about the animal control ordinance. Uh, Brad Gates, our animal control director, has been working with a lot of folks with uh, comments, and he is working to kind of try to bridge the gap and uh, give the board a, an update. Um, probably should have added that under new bit or unfinished business, but uh, just an update to the board that, that is going on. The public hearing is scheduled for October 6th. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. 
Is there anything further? At this time, we will go into closed session, present to North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11, subsection A4, economic development, as well as uh, North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11, subsection A6, for personnel.
resume with the open session. Uh, at the closed session, uh, personnel items were discussed. Uh, there is uh, no action required. Um, in relative to uh, economic development, uh, is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, I'll make the motion to modify an economic development incentive of $52,933 over a five-year period for Project BKR based on a $3 million investment in Iredell County. Motion by Commissioner Robertson. Is there any discussion? There none. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. Is there any other business to come before the board? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I offer a motion to call for a public hearing on September 15th, 7 p.m., regarding economic development and seating in the amount of $69,126 over a five-year period for Project S. D.C. based on a $4 million investment in Iredell County. Right, any further discussion? Motion by Commissioner Johnson. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. Okay. Is there anything else to come before the board? Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Johnson. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Good night, gentlemen. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you.